my name is Mike Meredith. I'm the, the doctor of Doctors Woodshop. You can see the products that I make, the finishing products, at doctorswoodshop.com. Today we're at Northwoods Figured Woods Open House again to make a video tutorial on a project a lot of people ask me about, and that's production of spheres. Now, wooden spheres are an irresistible project. No one can walk by a bowl of spheres and not pick them up. It's also the best way to look at all the aspects of wood. You see end grain, you see side grain, you see transitional grain, you see figure, uh, you see everything the wood has to offer. The sphere is also a great project for the beginner, the intermediate, the advanced turner for that matter, because it's not just turning. It's turning to dimension and it's turning to shape that you recognize. Who knows what a honey dipper is supposed to look like? Everyone knows what a sphere is supposed to look like and what it's supposed to feel like in your hands. So today I'm going to show you how to turn a sphere using this terribly clever little tool. This is the Berger Sphere Caliper, uh, invented by Soren Berger, a, a very nice fellow and an extraordinarily talented turner from New Zealand, that is, for the experienced sphere, to sphere turner, not really necessary, but for the beginner, a real boon, because it allows you to avoid the mistakes that make your spheres smaller and smaller and smaller. Before you get trapped into making a set of bocce balls, though, you might want to try this a few times because making one of anything is easy. Making two of anything is very hard. So today I will show you the steps in making a, uh, a sphere. We're going to use a, a um, flame box elder from uh, Les's collection. And I hope you find it interesting and instructive. People ask all the time how I sharpen my tools. And uh, what I've learned is, is that uh, Glenn Lucas had it right. It doesn't matter how you sharpen your tools, the fact that they are sharp is what's important. This is the setup that I use uh, for all of my tools. It's a, a slow speed grinder with the Wolverine uh, base. Um, these are uh, dim uh, diamond and, and CNBR. This is a cubic boron nitride wheel from uh, D-Way Tools. This is a diamond tool. This is an 80 grit. This is 120 grit. What makes the, the setup I use a little different is my tool holder. What I ha we have here is a hybrid system. This is an adapter made by Bob Fredrickson, a friend of mine here in Portland, that uses the uh, Tormek gouge sharpening tool. So what it means is that you've got the, the advantage of linear placement as well as the, the great tool sharpening, the shape modification capacity of the Tormek gouge. That one needed a little more dressing than I thought it would, but now I have a, a nice little spindle gouge ready to go uh, back to the sphere turning, sharp and ready to cut. This system has the advantages of the Tormek, allowing you to, to control shape as well as wing length with one piece of equipment. Through most of the video today, you're going to hear me more than see me, but this is where the important stuff is going on anyway. So, um, once we have our wood fixed into the lathe, then um, we bring it down to a cylinder shape. This is a uh, piece of flame box elder here from uh, Les's collection at Northwood Figured Woods that I hope will wind up with a very nice sphere. Now, the, the considerations that you have to take into account, you need about half an inch on either end to hold it in the, in the chuck, uh, hold it within the lathe. But you've got some latitude if you have a, a piece of the wood, for example, this flame part. I've got it off center just slightly so that this will remain, because as you can maybe see, the flame doesn't extend through the entire piece of wood. So first, we'll finish now taking it down to a cylinder, and then we'll actually take off and, and talk about the mechanics of turning a sphere. What I want to show you today is the Burger Sphere Caliper. Now, this is not essential for turning spheres, but it makes it a lot easier, particularly for someone just beginning to turn spheres. And the reason is that the caliper will set in steel the location of critical dimensions. And let's go to the easel for a second to show you what I'm talking about. We'll resort to the two-dimensional display here for just a little bit. Let me make a point. If you think about a sphere as simply being a spherical object trapped in a piece of wood, your goal in turning a sphere is to release that. Now where most people go wrong, well they don't go wrong, what they wind up doing is making small, smaller spheres than they wanted to, 
is that they wind up cutting away too much of the outside shape. So if we can come up with a, a way to preserve uh, critical dimensions, and every radius is critical, but you can't save them all sometimes, uh, then we have a better chance of winding up with a sphere close to the size we want it. That's what the, the sphere caliper does. The sphere caliper fixes in metal by measuring the, the, the diameter of, of the uh, cylinder, fixes in metal where we're going to find two of the critical radius, the 45 degree tangent radius and the 22 and a half degree radius tangent. And what we're doing when we use the sphere caliper is defining lines. We're defining that line and we're defining the two 22 and a half degree tangents. So if we can go in and cut a straight line there, a straight line there, and a straight line there, we've saved the maximum diameter of the sphere. Now after you've done this a few times, you don't really need the caliper to tell you where to make your cuts. But the first few times you turn a sphere, it's really useful to have a guideline. And you'll see me use this as we go along, laying out the turning lines, also finding the midpoints of our, our tangents to, sit, to mark the blank uh, with lines that should not be removed until the last steps. is mark out the locations to cut between to um, preserve the 45 degree tangent. Now I'm going to take it down on the other side, make the same sort of marks, I'll cut a straight line connecting those two positions, and we've taken our four-sided figure to an eight-sided figure. done now is mark out the positions for the tangents to preserve that 22 and a half degree uh, radius and when I cut connect those two lines with a straight cut we've gone from a four sided figure to an eight sided figure now a 16 sided figure and that's pretty close to red. So now we've got a 16 sided figure that is starting to look sort of spherical. Um, it's an interesting point that the direction in which you look at an object determines how you perceive it. Things will look about 10% longer in the horizontal direction than in the vertical direction. So things that look spherical when you're, the, the line of, of say is in this direction will be in fact slightly elongated on the ends. So you wind up, you'll see me going like this every now and then, that's just to adjust the way I look at it. From here on out what I will do, what I'm doing is using a, a spindle gouge to get this as close to round as I can get. And I'll use the calipers to evaluate roundness. Then we'll just start sanding. I don't know who invented these. I don't think it was my original idea, but I'm the first one that I know of that has actually made them. These are our tools to help round the surface. And as you can probably tell, they started life as hole saws. Um, grind the teeth off fasten them to a handle and what you have is a tool that will scrape in a circular, uh, scrape a circular uh, arc across the surface. Now it, what it does is not just show you where the high spot is, it'll actually cut off the high spot. Now the noise is somewhat distressing but not quite so bad. Now since the, the calipers are still set to the original diameter, you can use them to evaluate how close to round your figure actually is. This one is just a little bit long on the ends, but we're not done yet. We're getting pretty close to a spherical shape. There are lots of ways to sand, but Abernet 
is one of the most convenient when you're working toward a rounded shape, like a bowl or a sphere. And you'll see the, sand, the, the sanding material just comes right through the nets of the paper. You notice the dust, no doubt. From here on, I'll sand with a sanding lubricant to make the sanding more efficient and to keep the dust out of the air. What I've done the last couple of minutes is use um, grits of sandpaper up to 600. You can sand as far as you want, but really who likes to sand? And I've used a sanding lubricant because that speeds the process up and makes each grid a little more efficient. The finish that I've put on it is a walnut oil wax shellac. This is actually an experimental finish that I'm working on now. See, it doesn't have the doctor's woodshop label on it yet. Uh, using a microcrystal wax instead of carnauba. If it shows up on the website, doctorswoodshop.com, you can judge the experiment as a success. done is, is cut off the ends uh, that held the piece in the lace. So the question becomes, how do you finish the sphere? And the answer is with something called cup chucks that are simply chucks that hold the piece without actually penetrating the surface. So the cup chuck can be made in any sort of forms. I like uh, the one with the Morris Taper two on the end that just fits right into the lathe. But you can turn a piece in your standard four jaw chuck as long as it's got the cup part. And when I call it a cup chuck, or I didn't call it a cup chuck, but the reason it gets its name is that this cup is deep enough that it only contracts, contacts the sphere in a circle around the outside. Okay. And the pressure of the two circles will hold this in place. So on the drive center end, we have a Morris Taper 2, and this is one that I've made that fits onto a, a Nova Live Center that will hold the other end in place. You notice that I turned it um, twice after the init initial chucking of the cup to make sure that in all three axes, X, Y, and Z, there was no ghost image. If the sphere is out around, you look at the top and you'll see a gray sort of image. That's called a ghost image. That, that shows you that the sphere is not quite round. You can take that down with sandpaper or, as you saw me doing, uh, using a skew chisel as a negative rake scraper. Um, a little resanding and reinstallation of um, the walnut oil wax and shellac finish, and that's it.